As the weather begins to pick up, we're still seeing the extent of damage rain has caused crops. I'm here today with co-owner of Kyo's, Ross Kyo. Ross, what, how far behind schedule are farmers this year in comparison to other years? Well, Louise, thanks for coming out this morning. Uh, as you can see, the sun is shining. We've a bit of clouds, but it's great weather. But the farmers have had over a year of the perfect storm in regards to what we've been dealing with. So currently in the next several weeks, farmers are going to be trying to catch up on a hell of a lot of work. Every machine they're using is 10 different jobs it should have been doing. A big, big catch up. There's a lot to be caught up on and a lot that's not going to be caught up on. We're several weeks behind. So in regards to the potato crop, it's about four plus weeks behind. So that means we have a reduced growing season. It means we're going to be harvesting further into the winter than next year. And some of these issues we have this year are going to have a knock on effect. Because of that, we have last year's crop was a really poor crop. We're back about 30% on sellable yield on tonnage come out of the field. You can see this field we're in here now. A couple of weeks ago, this was all underwater and now it's rock hard like a cake. There's potatoes here. You won't salvage these potatoes. So you have a crop from last year that has gave us about 70% of what it should have done and has to last at least another four weeks into the season. It needs to get to here, but it's only about this much. So we have to make up several weeks of potatoes, potato supply for the consumer. And then with the weather starting to clear up, what are farmers currently doing work-wise on their farms to play catch up? So you're going to have farmers and they're going to be prioritising what they're doing. If they have some potatoes left on the ground, do they try to take them out and make some money out of them? Uh, try and get some of their money back to try break even or not lose as much money? Or do they go on and they have to catch up on sowing their, their spring barley and spring wheat, uh, which is with, with reduced weeks of um, the growing season is going to give them a reduced yield on a poorer tonnage uh, price they're going to get per tonne. Um, they're going to weigh it up and go, what do we do? Right, let's get the potatoes in. And that's where give and take comes into it. What are they going to do? So there's too much to get done all at once. So how will this affect the consumer then in the long term? Will we see a shortage on shelves and will we see prices going up as well? Well, every potato that is salvageable will be used because we have a shortage. What's going to happen is there will be Potatoes will be come in, come in and, go, and go onto the shelf to supplement the Irish crop to make sure that we get through and there's potatoes on the shelf for the consumer until the new season comes in. But the problem is we have these extra several weeks where the potatoes should have been in the ground now growing and they'd normally come in around third week in August. It's now going to be second third week in September. So as I said, from a reduced crop, we have to go further into the season. So the maths doesn't add up. So there'll have to be a substitution comes onto the shelf for the consumer. It comes down to a simple supply and demand to a certain extent, but the potato price has gone up already this season on the shelf. Um, but potatoes, in the last about 10 years, the price has not really risen on the shelf. So a lot of the price increase you would have seen on the shelf this year was a bit of market correction because of all the costs that it takes to grow potatoes. Now, every touch point to grow a crop of potatoes or any crop from an agricultural perspective it, all the costs have gone up in the last number of years. So we had the cost of living crisis back in 2022 and nearly everything on the shelf went up. During that, in April, this time two years ago, potatoes were one of the only product to go down in price. Yet land rent's gone up, fertilizer's up, seed is up, diesel's up, price of tractors nearly doubled in the last 10 or 15 years. Everything has gone up, labor's gone up, costs a lot more to live. So potato price has gone up. The percentage of that is needed to make potatoes viable as a product. And as I said, you would have had a bit of supply and demand there. And Ross, then looking down the line, how will it affect farmers in the future in terms of finance and your company as well? Well, you're, what you do there is you have to look at, look at your costs and see what's going to, you have to look at the bigger, ter, bigger picture as well. we'll we will get out of this and come out the other side of it. The, the, the thing you need to do is actually get products and have it on the shelf there for the consumer. What I don't want and no one in my industry wants is to have empty shelves there for the consumer and they stop buying potatoes. We'll have potatoes on the shelf for them just in a reduced volume and there will be other bags there of imports. That's another option for them to, to pick up. So we have Irish potatoes. We have a good growing season now this year. We can um, get a lot of this back, but we're looking at another season coming where we have a lot of issues. So there's another season of this to come and then we'll see where we go. And do you think that there should be some additional support there for potato farmers just to help them get to the end of this? 
Uh, I know the IFA are in talks with the department in regards to um, seeing if they can get some money together for growers. There are certain growers that have lost over 50% of their crop and they will be in a particular bad situation. So I know they're in talks with the department and let's see how that goes.